That is, what an amazing year of generosity. You don't want to know how much you guys, at least, we, we're still talented, it, but at least, you want to know how much you guys gave last year to Legacy Giving? Anybody have a guess? Oh, $226,000. Come on, let's give God a great big hand. I want to thank you today for making the dream possible of bringing God's love to our community in such a powerful way. A couple of things I want you to take a look at right now. I want you to go ahead and pull this card out right here. And uh, put, the, put, that, uh, can you put that background up. Can you put the uh, mountain background up? Can you put a mountain back? I think we got a mountain. I'm going to work on that there. Okay. What's that? There we go. We're going to move this so you guys can actually see this here. This is my hometown right here. This is Tucson, Arizona. Can you see that there? That's uh, That mountain right there is called the Catalina Mountain. And I grew up in uh, every morning. I don't know if I can turn that there a little bit there. but Can you guys see that back there? Okay. I grew up every morning. I would look at this mountain. And I remember as a kid, mountains were just part of my world. Everywhere on the West Coast, especially, that's the, actually, that's the tail end of the Colorado uh, Rocky Mountain chain. And every morning I'd grow up and think that mountain was kind of normal. And if you grew up in a mountain area, you know mountains are rugged, you know, trying to hike that mountain, it would kill you to try to hike up that thing. But, but I actually had a God moment on that mountain. My life actually was, uh, uh, my moment with Christ, and I came to Christ, my experience was because of that mountain. I was driving a car. I hit a guardrail, and I realized that I was far from God at that moment. That really brought me to a reality that I needed Christ as my Savior. And in scriptures, you read a lot about mountains. And in Mark chapter 11, Jesus said, Jesus said, if you have the faith of God, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed. And every person here, you can identify with obstacles and challenges in your life that keep us from really being able to come what we believe God has called us to be. And that's where we need faith. We need faith. Everything in the kingdom of God is accomplished by faith. And so this year, this actually several months back, I was praying about what the Lord would have us, the theme, the 2022 calendar year. And I just felt in my spirit that we were to call it Move That Mountain. Everyone say, Move That Mountain. You see, we have all kinds of obstacles and mountains and and many of you here at uh, City Church have taken Financial Peace University. I'd like to just see hands real quick. How many of you taken an FPU or Financial Peace University class? Come on, let's give all these great, let's give them a great big hand tonight. And you know one of Dave's, Dave Ramsey's key things, one of his key focuses is getting out of debt. Before you invest, before you save money for the future, Dave Ramsey talks about getting out of debt. And the story of City Church is simple. We started 22 years ago. We came here with three families. But God gave us a dream, and over the years, we watched God bless. We saw his favor through all the challenges, through all the mountains that we believed God to help us move. We ended up in this property in 2015. 2015, uh, we borrowed about $2.75 million to purchase this campus. And, and I was telling Pastor Rich just a little while ago, I said, the day that we signed on this contract, the very next day, we had a charter school coming for the seven acres over here where we just removed the farmhouse. We had a charter school offer is $4 million, which is $1.25 million more than we'd pay for the whole campus. And I told the guys, I said, man, that's a big number, but it ain't big enough because God's got a bigger dream. Come on, God's got a bigger dream for us. We came to you guys a couple of years ago, and the church was so generous, and you enabled us to purchase the property and remodel and do all the things that we did. And then a couple of years ago, we cast the vision. We talked to you about raising up the next generation, and we, bu we built the first phase of the City Church Academy building. I want you just to go ahead and open this up here, and I'm just going to walk through this real quick. But the first phase, which is phase one, which is this calendar year, part of our moving the mountain and our church is reducing some debt. We currently have about $3.4 million in debt here at City Church. We borrowed about a million dollars to complete the building. It was about a $2 million project, this 13,000 square foot building over here. And we, we paid about a million we paid in cash, but the rest of the million we borrowed. And so we've reduced our debt right now down to about $3.4 million. We have a dream. We have a dream that God has given us for the rest of this property. 
And I want you to see this dream. I want you to see how this lays out. And we have a little video here. I think it's going to help express better than I can even say in words. But I want you to see in video, we believe the dream that God's going to help us to do through his Holy Spirit and through you and the Legacy Team at City Church. Watch this video. Come on, everybody say big dream, but we have a big God, amen? We walked through the four phases, and the first phase was to reduce our debt by at least a million dollars. Now, we'd like to pay all the, all the debt off the next year, but we're believing by faith the Lord's going to enable us to pay off at least a million dollars in debt in this next year. The second phase is our school, it's our gym, it's cafeteria, it's a multi-purpose area for our kids' ministry and our church, and a gym. And I think you saw in there, there's 16 uh, classrooms. There's a beautiful gym. It's about 15,000 feet. And all this, we believe that God's going to help us to do, not just to build City Church Academy, which is a huge part of the vision here. You, you saw in our testimonial video just a little bit ago that uh, our City Church Academy ministry, we believe, is one of the key components that God has given us in this generation to really reach young people, to reach children, and to equip them in a godly, biblical worldview. And our school currently is licensed for 500 students. This building over here that we just built uh, it will house about 200 kids, about 180 kids. And so for us to really fulfill the, 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 the plan and the vision that God has for us on this campus, we're going to need more facilities. And so that's the second phase. The third phase is that we're going to expand the lobby here. You guys, right now we're meeting inside the auditorium. And we're grateful that we can do that. But we really believe that by pushing that lobby out and building an expansion, it gives us a, a cafe and a bookstore. We'll have a, a larger space. And so rather than having dinners like inside the auditorium, We'll be able to have our functions out there in the lobby. And the last phase, our offices. This is going to be about a 10 to $12 million project, and we're believing over the next 7 to 10 years by faith. And as I tell people, the vision is accomplished as fast as the money comes. And tonight, I believe, I believe that you are here tonight because God has spoken to your heart, and you believe in legacy. Uh, someone once said that you will leave a legacy. You're going to leave a legacy in your life. It's just what kind of legacy you're going to live, leave. And so we're going to leave a God kind of legacy. We're going to leave a God kind of dream here at City Church. And I, I want you to know today that Melanie has been a big part here of making this dinner happen tonight. So let's give Melanie a great big hand. She is our dream, dream team coordinator. 
So as a dream team coordinator, she helps empower you to volunteer in our community. So the, like the project that we did just a couple of weeks ago, Serve Day, where we went to the schools in our community. She was really instrumental in empowering and, and making the connections with the different schools. When we gave a thousand gifts, right, to the Seminole County, to the to the employees of Seminole County, right, to the fire department, to the, who did you give it to? Tell me, who, help me out here. It was the employees at Waste Pro City Hall and some of the dining staff at Seminole yeah, County. So all Public that schools. all that took place because that, that's her role here at City Church. She is our City Church Dream Team Coordinator, and she really wants to help empower you serve. So Melanie is going to share some of the stuff that we're going to we're believing God's going to help us do together. Because everyone say we're better together. Better together. We're going to do together this coming calendar year. Yeah, so we got to hear a lot of what we did in this last year, and I believe God's going to do a whole lot more. And it's been pretty exciting to see all of the connections that we've been able to make. And, you know, just like we just said, with Seminole County Public Schools, with Waste Pro, Bright House, um, Ashley Furniture, we've done so much more that even that video didn't even get to capture. But um, I want to share just a little bit what we're going to continue to do. So we're going to continue doing serve days. I know a lot of you guys were part of that in this last year, and I want to say thank you because we couldn't have done that without you. And so we're going to do um, six or more serve days next year. We're going to continue Operation Blessing, where we give out Thanksgiving food bags to families in need. And that's just coming up in the next few weeks. And then gifts for um, children of single parents, so about 150 of those. We want to add 12 missionaries. And um, if you don't know this, we, 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 already, we support about 65, but we support all of them for about 50 to to $100 a month. And so we want to add 12 more of those. Um, we're going to have a summer serve day. And then we want to do two to three um, either local and foreign mission trips next year. So um, we will give more information as, as I think we're... one of them working on is doing a medical medical yes. mission trip mm -hmm. as well as doing uh, evangelism as mm -hmm. well as possibly building, uh, possibly building uh, a church or two in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to talk about that real quick. Um, over the last several years, God's opened the door for us to and partner with work with other ministries. Several years back, we as a congregation, we were able to build a well in Africa. And uh, we, in our, in our fellowship, we work with different groups that do different kinds of outreaches and missions projects around the world. And uh, they build what they call tabernacles. And each tabernacle is basically a place that there's a group of Christians. Uh, they're worshiping Jesus, but they don't have a building. And a lot of times they just meet outside. And uh, we have, the, pot, we have the, the, the potential next year to build at least three tabernacles. They cost about $13,000. And I was talking to the missionary about it. He said, the moment we build one of these tabernacles, and basically they're just, uh, there's some poles of the steel structure with a roof on top of it. He said, the moment that we build that tabernacle, they'll have 200 people worshiping Jesus there every single Sunday. Come on, let's give God a big hand. I mean, for 12000 bucks. We can't even change an air conditioning here for 12,000 bucks. <laughs> and they can build a place that will gather people to worship Jesus and share the message of the gospel and to disciple and to train people. And so it's really stirred my heart. And I felt like this coming year, that's a great opportunity. And then one of the things that they do many times when they go into community, not only do they build a tabernacle, but they'll put a, a well where they're able, the people are able to get fresh water. And I tell you what, Jesus said he was the water of life. And whoever drink of him would never thirst again. When you put a well and a tabernacle together, how many know you got a recipe for revival? Come on. you got a recipe for God to do something great in that community. And so we're going to partner with our fellowship and missions organizations to make that possible next year. And the last area here is our next generation. And uh, this is our, our children. These are our, our youth and our kids, our kids building next door. We'd like to do some renovations and some upgrades. That's around $50,000. Every, every summer at, uh, at, at camp time, we take an offering for my birthday. And it's not for me. It's so that we can scholarship and send, send kids to camp. And Pastor Joe, how many kids did you guys send to camp? About 140 last year? What was that? Kids and youth? 140 kids. So we had 140 kids. We were able to sponsor a lot of those kids because of your giving to my birthday gift. Come on, let's give God a great big hand. We're working on increasing enrollment on our City Church Academy. And then our youth and our children, we're teaching the next generation to be generous. And so City Youth, through the, our Speed the Light program, they're working on supporting a missionary in Africa, I believe, as well. And uh, city, kids, city Kids is working through their Boys and Girl Missionary cru uh, Crusade, the BGMC program. They're working on sponsoring a missionary, I believe, also in Africa this year. And they're building a TV station. And so the heart of City Church is to give. 
the Bible says that, we're, <laughs> that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And so we live to give. We absolutely live to give. And I, I got to tell you today, this man that I'm about to introduce to you, Melanie, let's give Miss Melanie a great big hand. Thank you for helping me tonight. I was able to spend some time with him. I've known him, and we've had conversations, but we've never really had a set-down conversation. And I was able to share what God did in my life through his ministry. And i got to tell you, legacy is significant. I've been thinking a lot about this as we've come up to this legacy dinner and just thinking about City Church and my life and my kids and my family and your families and thinking about the impact that we've already made in this community. But about 35 years ago, 36 years ago, I had just given my life to Christ. I was, uh, I was a passionate fireball for Jesus. I was working in a restaurant. And I sensed God stirring in my heart and life. I sensed God doing something significant. And, and I remember I went to youth camp. And at this youth camp, it was at this youth camp that God spoke to me. God began to speak to my heart. And it was, it was this man that God would use as an instrument in my life. This man, his name is Dr. Rich Wilkerson. And he currently pastors Trinity Church in Miami, it's a great church. It's, it's got a huge contingency of Haitian people, and God has used them in a powerful way. Many of you know his son, who is Rich Wilkerson Jr., who also pastors in the Miami community. Uh, Pastor Rich Wilkerson uh, started a church in Harlem a couple of years ago with one of his other sons. He's the founder of Peacemakers, a Florida nonprofit organization. He's the co-chancellor of North Central University, located in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. Along with his wife, Dr. Robin Wilkerson, they have four, four sons, three daughter, daughter-in-laws, and eight grandchildren. He told me today they've been married for 49 years. Come on, give him a great big hand. Rich has preached in over 1,700 public schools across America, traveled to 29 stations. He's had television programs. He's the author of seven books. His latest book, I just read a couple of months ago, entitled I Choose, I Choose Honor, emphasizes the need to embrace and practice the honoring of, of other people. He sat on boards and president councils. Uh, he's involved in a ministry that unites, that, that really helps the gospel of Jesus Christ impact people of other faith. He's also an ambassador to United Nations. It's called the ECOSOC, -E and it's an NGO, Project One. But I got to tell you, more significantly than all that, more for me personally, how he's touched my life. As a young man, I was counseling at a, at a, a youth camp in Prescott, Arizona, and Pastor Rich was tr the, the guest evangelist that week, and I remember he was preaching throughout the week, and God was moving in a powerful way, and begin to sense, as I mentioned, that God was stirring me to do something greater with my life. And on the last night of that camp, he preached a message entitled, I Want the Cross. And as he preached that message, I felt so stirred in my heart. At the very end, he said, listen, if you want the cross tonight, I want you to stand up. I want you to put your fist in the air and you shout out, I want the cross. And at that moment, I was the very first guy. That room was packed with 500 kids and workers. And I stood up and I shouted, I want the cross. And the moment I did that, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, I've called you to ministry. Now, listen, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know how that was going to happen. I didn't know God's plan for my future. But I knew in that moment that God, God tapped me to do something significant to leave a legacy for his kingdom, for his glory, for his honor. Let me tell you today, I'm grateful for Pastor Rich. But that's not all. It's interesting how God uses a man like that. Several years later, Pastor Rich was part of our fellowship, and they were leading a, a coalition uh, across America talking about planting inner city churches in 39 cities of America. And Pastor Rich was sharing. We were both part of the Northwest District back then, and he was sharing, and, and I, my wife and I had already done an inner city church work in Seattle, but as Pastor Rich was sharing that night, talking about church planning and the need for the gospel to be expanded through brand new churches, he preached that night, and once again, I found myself standing in the air saying, yes, God, I'm willing to do whatever you ask me to do. As a direct result of that night, as a direct result of that night, City Church was birthed in my heart. And I want you to hear today, this man right here, he has not only, he has natural children with his four sons and his grandchildren, he has spiritual children, you know, in his local church. 
but around the nation, and I, re, I mean around the globe, there are sp spiritual children and grandchildren that are part of his legacy because he shared the gospel, because he passionately told people about the love of God. And I'm here today to welcome Pastor Rich Wilkerson. Come on, I want us to stand and give the man of God a great big hand today. Come on, let's give our hero, let's give our hero today a great big hand. Wow, we. You may be seated, everybody. Thank you so much, Pastor Eugene. Wow, you know, do you know that I just heard that story this afternoon in the car? I didn't even know that. And I was just sitting in the car, like, my God in heaven, are you serious? And, uh, you know, I think, I think it's a good witness that you don't become weary in well doing. Because some of the things that you feel weren't as victorious as you wanted them to be, years later, you're learning <laughs> a lot of things happened that you had no clue of. You weren't able to take record of it and then take credit for it. And that's probably the way God wants it anyway. <laughs> but uh, it is such an honor for me to be uh, with you tonight to be with Pastor Eugene and his wonderful wife, Laura, uh, and uh, Pastor Glenn uh, Wolf. I did uh, my master's program in his cohort uh, at Southeastern, so we were classmates together. He's much smarter than me, but I talk a lot, and so I talk my way through stuff I don't understand, and uh, Glenn knows that, so I, I think I was able to Anyway, um, wow. <clears throat> I have four sons, and my firstborn son um, was uh, everything. We waited eight years, and then he showed up. And then it was four in a row, all boys. And uh, we were kind of ready for kids, and it, it, it dominated my life. It, it, that, that was everything. And I was an evangelist on the road, and I would leave on Saturday, come home on Thursday. Every fifth week was off. And my father-in-law lived right next door to me. We built houses next door to each other. And so consequently, because of that, um, they had a second dad. He helped me raise those boys. And uh, I can remember uh, one of the boys asking for, you know, a pair of Air Jordans. He was probably five years old. And his mother, no, Rich, you're not going to get those. And he'd head out the back door and down the steps. And I'd watch him. He'd go in Pop's house. And about 10 minutes later, Nana would pull her big car out of the garage, and Rich would be in it. And I'd watch him leave, and he'd be going, I knew they were going to the mall. He'd come home with those Air Jordans. I mean, it was an amazing thing to have not Nana and Papa right next door. But the older one, uh, John Fulton, he was, I mean, and you know, these are your kids. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I woke up in the middle of the night and he was laying on my face in wet pants. You know, I mean, he just, he would get out of bed and come get in bed with us and I'd be smothering and I'd wake, there, God in heaven, and he's sound asleep. You know, I'd pull him up and change him, throw him back in his bed. He'd be back. And, you know, they, they, they kind of have a way of endearing their heart to you. You know what I'm saying? I think this is why uh, it's hard for parents to let their kids become adults because you can never forget the pee in the face. I, it, it's hard to make those people be adult. You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget. Uh, Rich, my second son, his old son is John Fulton. But Richie, when Richie, uh, a little kid, he couldn't say his S's. Uh, uh, he, he could, he, he, they were F's. It, like, fee fed, fud up. You know, in our house, it was a sin to say shut up. You couldn't say that. And, you know, you straight to hell for that. And uh, so, and so there was a girl next door named Christina. He came in one day. You know, and, and uh, he was all just red in the face. You know, he's like a five-year-old kid. Dad, you know what Christina fed? She fed fed up. And I told her, Christina, you fed and fed up. You would go to heaven. Jesus put you in hell if you 
good faith, faith, but uh, I mean, he's, he's rich, 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 calm. I mean, he was crying, he was so upset she's going to hell because she he's rich, she won't go to hell, but you know, she, we need to get back, you know, that, that kind of. I remember when he was getting his first haircut with a, you know, guys, you take your kid and it's the zzz, it just freaks them out. I don't know why. Little boy just freaks out. And, and uh, he was probably three then, you know, and he took him and his, his brother was with him, I was with him. And, and you know, he was, they, they put the, it was a women's place. That's where my wife took the, So I took, and so, um, you know, it was like a Saturday and there was a, about 20, you know, white women with blue hair. You know, it's mostly older women. And blue-haired ladies, and um, and it was and Richie. So you can imagine all these women. This little kid, this cute little kid, you know. And he's getting his first, zzz, you know. And you guys, he is uptight. You know, and his brother John Fulton was on one side. He's about six, and I'm on the other side. And uh, the poor gal that's doing it, she's, zzz, you know. And he's just shaking, you know. And she's holding it together. He's holding it together, but. <laughs> At the end, he's just about to lose it, and she finishes, and she thought this would make him happy, and she said, well, who wants a sucker? <laughs> Richie. I want him. He can't say his S's. I'm telling you, I've never been that embarrassed in my life. And little John Fulton's going, he can't say S's. He can't say S's. He says F's instead. And all the women are going, dear God in heaven, they must have a wretched mother. And I, I grabbed him. I said, okay, we got out. That, 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 you know, these children, they endear themselves to you. you. You can't get away from that. Yeah. My third son, Graham, you know, he at six months old contracted spinal meningitis and he died on the way to the hospital. He was resuscitated and was in a deep coma for six days, and uh, God raised him up. And we had incredible men and women of God come to the hospital during that time, including James Robinson, laid their hands on him, and, and God raised him up. He has limitations now. He's 34. He lives with his mother and I. But he, any you know brain issues basically are just DNA. I mean, it basically because he's my son, I mean, the brain problem. But, I mean, he's brilliant on the computer, and he has his driver's license. He's an amazing kid. Our youngest son, Taylor, uh, I would always kiss the boys at night, you know, and sing to them and tell them how much I love them. Taylor, at the age of eight mo 18 months, would always, the moment I started to kiss him, put his hand up against my mouth, push me away. And it just, you know, after about a year of that, I, he's, I, he can talk now a little bit. He's two and a half. And one night, I said, I said, Taylor, I miss you so bad. You're always pushing me away. What's the problem? Bad breath. <laughs> I just, so, I mean, it's just, uh, let me just give you, I, I've got a picture of my whole family, uh, my wife and I. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, so uh, the oldest one's on the far left with his wife, that's John Fulton's wife, Ashley, and their two children, Izzy and Fulton, and then Robin and me in the middle, and Graham, the one that God raised from the dead, is I got my arm around him. Then Richie and Don Cherie, and their little boy, uh, Wyatt, is on Richie's shoulder, and then Wilde is on Don Cherie's arm. And then on the right is Taylor and Kristen, and um, that's Nora in front of her mom. She's the oldest, and then Huddy Hudson is in his dad's arms, and then baby Eva is in mar mom's arm. You can ba barely see her. She kind of blends in, you know. And then we've got another one, and I think I got that picture. Is it uh, the, the grandkids, uh, Robin? And then we've got another brand new baby that Richie had, and Robin's sitting with Waylon. That's Waylon Wesley Wilkerson, Rich and Don Tree, finding a little girl. We've got uh, eight grandkids, four boys, four girls, so we're blessed by God. And uh, all my three sons, uh, Graham is with us at our church in Miami. My other three sons all planted their own churches and pastored their own churches. My oldest son, 
John Fulton and his wife, Ashley, pastor in Tacoma, Washington. They started that church this year during COVID. COVID is called Pacific Coast Church, and uh, it's rocking. I could tell you I, all night about that. And, of course, many of you know Rich Jr., and his church is in Miami, South Florida, Vu Church. And that's just a huge. They bought two buildings during COVID. Can you imagine? And God's blessed him. And then Taylor, uh, my, my youngest one, pastors in New York City in Harlem. He pastors the Trinity New York Church. And they meet at the Magic Johnson AMC Theaters in Harlem. And so we're a blessed family. And <clears throat> Um, uh, I'm so excited because if I think about tonight, I'm thinking that, that God's mission is this, Matthew 16, 18. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, Jesus, that I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. That is the mission of God, to build the work of God, the mission of Christ, to build the church around the world. And no matter what comes, no matter if there's COVID, there's a pandemic worldwide, I will build my church. And when God wills something, how many know it's going to happen? And then along with God's mission is God's promise to you and me, which is found in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. That was my promise as a young man. My first child, I was 28 years old when John Fulton was born. God said, you just get your hook so deep in that kid with the God's word and, and, and Christian education, and I'll make you a promise, son. That boy will come back. If he runs, he'll come back. And you know something? All four of those boys, by the grace of God, have come back to Christ and are doing things for the Lord. And I can only give God glory and my wife praise. Hallelujah. She raised them. Hallelujah. But now tonight, I want to read a text to you. It's a little bit lengthy. You're all familiar with it. And I won't talk long, about an hour. And um, it's found it won't be that long quite. It's found in the book of Luke chapter 16. <clears throat> you know it well. And Jesus tells a story. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him off to Abram's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abram far away <clears throat> with Lazarus by his side. So he called him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, son, whenever that in your lifetime, you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this between us, you, a great schasm, a chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family. For I have five brothers, let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abram replied, they have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. No, Father Abram, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. I, years ago, I used to preach a message, what in hell do we need on earth? And it took hell to turn this rich man into a lover of lost souls. Because once he got to hell, he became a, des a, a desirer of missionaries on planet earth to warn his brother not to come here. 
I used to tell young people, I always said, I've, I've heard young people say, I want to go to hell. All my friends will be there. I'll guarantee you if your friends are there, they're not hoping you show up. That's based on this story. Um, I showed you the pictures of my kids because I wanted you to know where my heart is tonight. I love you with all my heart, but I could never love you as much as I love my own sons, my own flesh and blood, my grandchildren. All four of my sons were born in the same hospital in Tacoma, Washington. All attended the same Christian school up until the oldest met his senior year in high school. And that's when God called me to lead my family to, Tacoma, to Miami, Florida from Tacoma, Washington. Now you can't really get farther away from your father-in-law, if you look at the map of the United States, than to move from up here in Seattle all the way down here to Miami. Now, he and I were best friends. But we moved, and when we got to Miami, um, my kids weren't that excited about it. We moved to a little ghetto church in 1998 called Trinity, about 250 Asian people. And my kids didn't like it. But I, I knew God had called us there, and I said to each one of them over and over, look, at, if you will learn to love these people that you've not grown up with and you don't understand their culture, if you will learn to love people that the people you were raised with don't always look on them with joy and gladness. If you can learn, boys, to love the underdog in your life, you'll always have a ministry. I didn't even mean that they would stand behind a pulpit because I believe the business world is ministry. I believe that the corporate world is ministry. I believe that all of us are called to be ministers of the gospel wherever God places us. So I said, you'll always have a ministry if you love you know, the lowest person in the to on the totem pole. And we have a tendency, and that's why I wrote the book, I Choose Honor, because we have a tendency to categorize people. This person's really important. This person's not so important. But it was Jesus' desire to kiss upward and kiss downward that nobody was unlovely in Jesus' eyes because all of us, are born with the Latin term that we use in seminary, the imago dei. The, we are made in the image of God, Genesis 27, 1 verse 27. And I don't care where you come from, what religion you are, what color you are, what your culture is, you are made in the image of God. And I, I wanted to teach my sons, G gentlemen, you've, you've got to love those people that you aren't accustomed to being with so that you can learn what the image of God looks like in everyone's body and life. And today, if you were to go to one of their ch churches, you would see at every one of their churches this amazing mix of diversity and culture. Now, their old man has a little bit of mix. That's because my wife and I go there. But it's pretty much a black church. And then Taylor's church in Harlem is pretty much a black church. But then John Fulton and, and Rich have as many Spanish people as black people. And they've even, uh, John Fulton has some Korean people and some Polynesian people out. And to, it's a wonderful mix of diversity. And, and, and the boys learn that at a young age. Um, I said to the boys, you've got to get this in your heart. And I used to tell them when they were little, now, mom and I will have something accumulated when we die. And whatever we have will be split four ways between the four of you. And then I would say, that, how do you want to take your inheritance? <clears throat> it's up to you because we're keeping records. I mean, do you, do you, no, do you, do you want it in court costs? You know, lawyer's fees, uh, drug rehab, DUI fines. I mean, how do you want to receive your inheritance? Oh, man, that scared them because they liked money. They didn't love it. They liked it. They saw what it could do. You know, Solomon said money's the answer to everything. And so they decided they would, uh, you know, try to keep it straight. And um, I said, I'm going to help you guys. I'm going to pay all of your Christian school education all through high school. And then you guys keep loving God, stay straight. Then we'll pay 
all of your college education, university. And of course, we had certain schools they could choose from. All right, I'm not going to pay you to go to hell, okay? So I, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to pay to go somewhere that's going to screw and jack your life up, all right? So, you know, anyway, it, it worked out. Um, but to try to help you, that's what I'm going to do for you as your father. And, 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 and you will graduate debt-free. I didn't, but you will. Your mother didn't, but you will. By the grace of God, you have seen the result tonight. I don't, I don't boast in this. I attribute that to their great Christian education. But now, I've got grandkids. I didn't think I'd be concerned. Of, oh, my goodness, I'm concerned about it. Wyatt, Wyatt and Wild and, and Waylon, W names. Mom's from the South. Uh, I, I'm just saying. Uh, I, these, these grandkids have got me, I, 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 it's, it's driving me crazy. And, and here's what I'm hearing. I'm 69. And here's what I'm hearing. Are any of you old guys out there hearing what I'm hearing? Uh, they're going to be taught the critical race theory in public education? Really? So in order for you to be even, we'll have to step on another group. Haven't we stepped on groups long enough? Can't we elevate education so that everyone's blessed and we don't have to step on someone to lift someone else up? When we went to Trinity 23 years ago, I said to our people, we'll have two goals. We will live by these goals. Number one, we're going to win. That's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 2.14. We will win. I don't care. <laughs> I have been able to make the greatest losses look like the biggest wins for 23. I'm, I, I am hooked on winning. And secondly, we go one, we go all. We are not going to step on someone to win someone else. We're going to, if we have to, we'll drag you along with us to get somebody else saved. We go one, we go all. And, th th and then I'm hearing this... Uh, uh, some schools, and I've come across them, are, are, now have shared bathrooms. The boys and the girls, are you serious? Uh, and it's not, no, it's certainly not all, not crazy, but it's happening slowly. And what's, what, what, what one generation condones, the next generation will openly practice. It's coming. And, and the schools are now refusing in some cases to call the gender of a child and my eight little grandkids are going to face this are you kidding me i'm telling i'm right up there <laughs> are you not allowed to get angry at the devil anymore huh here's what jesus has taught us me personally in the last three weeks I was blessed, Dr. Scott Hagen and I, he's the president of North Central University, and his wife and my wife, the four of us, were offered by Mr. David Green to bring 20 of our best donors across the country to Hobby Lobby in Oklahoma City to meet with him for two days. The themes would be business, generosity, and family legacy. And I watched multi-gazillionaires that I've known for years sit for two days with Mr. Green, 80 years of age almost, and weep as he told the story of Hobby Lobby. 50,000 employees nationwide, 900 stores, $8.6 billion annual income, excuse me, $7.6 billion annual income for the retail sales, 13 million square feet of office and warehouse space in Oklahoma City being used, not like empty, hoping to fill, no, 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 just they're building more to house what they're selling. 
and it's exploding worldwide. They're in the top 10 family-owned businesses in America. And he said, I had two struggles in my life. One was in 1985 when we were going bankrupt. And I laid under my desk. He's in Assemblies of God, Holy Ghost, crazy man for Jesus. I laid on the floor and I wept and I cried and I said, God, I don't know what to do. And he said, God showed me what to do in a matter of a few days. And we came out of it over the next year and a half. The second crisis I had in my life was when it was too big for me to handle. And I said again, God, I don't know what to do. And he said, once again, God showed me what to do. But he said, the scariest moment in my life happened about 30 years ago. One morning, I woke up terrorized. He said, I woke up with this thought, your grandchildren and great-grandchildren that are not born yet will be born multi-millionaires. And he looked at us, and tears were coming down his cheeks, and he said, that terrorized me. Because he knew the families that had been destroyed because of money and the love of money. And over the next several years, God gave the family as a whole a plan to, in the process of winning, divesting themselves of ownership. Because he said, God told me, David, you will either be an owner or a steward of what I bless you with. And he said, it was that day for sure that I decided I would be a steward. Now, church, I saw all this stuff this afternoon. I had it a, a week ago, but I didn't read it until this afternoon. I printed it out last night on our home computer, and I brought it on the plane. I started like, dear God, that's a lot of stuff. Jesus, help you know, I just, it was just so much, you know, I'm not that, okay? See, that's, you're fortunate to have a pastor like this. I just get up and go, we need God. I, I, if I would just spell it out, maybe, they, you know what I'm saying? But, but he had sent me this video that you saw just before I came up of the school. So that's all I've been thinking about. The school, the school. That's the whole deal. The Christian school. We, we see what's coming out there, and we see a potential answer that, with God's help, we could, in effect, make happen by the grace of God. Not, not because of us, but because of his grace on our lives. And after I talked to pastor this afternoon, I went back to my room, and I, I said, God, what are you doing? Because I feel so weird about this event. And a good, it's a good weird. It's not a bad weird. It's just like, God, what are you going to do tonight? What are you going to do this week in this church? And God said, read the story of Lazarus and the rich man, and then tell the people in the room that we are the rich man in this story. It's a weird metaphor. I get it. We're the rich man. And our kids and our grandkids are Lazarus begging at the table. Mommy, I, I think of a I think I'm a boy, but my teacher isn't sure. Mom, I don't like the school. Dad, can you help me, Dad? I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, Dad, I, I'm being bullied. Dad, I, it's, it's not like church. Dad, everybody at church loves me. I, I, I've got friends. I've got all. And then, Dad, I, I get away from church, and then I, I'm being pulled and dad it's weird and mom 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 they don't know they're Lazarus they don't know they're beg they don't even know and we've got all this stuff that gets in the way that we have to get done
But if we don't do this now, if we don't step in and save them now when they're little ones, if we don't do something now, it took us 22 years to get to this point where we've got 140 kids, K through 5, and that's phenomenal. But where does God want to take us? What does God want to do through this body? What he has begun, he wants to explode if we're willing to get naked financially. Say, dear God, I don't have it, but I'll find it. I'll get it. Whatever it costs me, I'll get it. You know, I know I've got my friend Stephen Strang here, and I've, even the pastor, remember that 100 years ago, the TV commercial for Fram Oil, remember that? And the Fram Oil commercial had, some of you guys remember it, and it was the oil filter, and, and it was always with this mechanic, and it's like 30 years ago, 35 years ago, and, and he would be all dirty from working in the car, you know, and and he'd always come out from underneath the hood and, you know, he'd say, man, I could have saved this guy so much money. He'd have a complete engine overhaul. But, you know, he just wouldn't buy a Fram oil filter. Two bucks, three bucks at that time. Just thought it was too much money. No, he never got an oil change, never got a Fram oil filter. So now I just had to do a $650 engine overhaul. So then you look in the camera. So you can pay me now or you can pay me later. And some of us think this is going to be too much of a reach into our pockets to build this next phase of this school. But I almost see it like You can pay it now and see him grounded in the faith. Get your hooks into him so deep that when the enemy comes at him, like that they won't be able to run because the hooks are deep. Or you can hold back and then all the lawyer's fees, drug rehab. Uh, 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 uh. My wife worked for 10 years as her father's women's director at one of the largest churches in America, Life Center, 5,000 people when mega churches really <laughs> weren't that well known. And she worked, she had every Tuesday between three and 500 people, depending on what they were studying. She called it WOW, Women of the Word. And then once a month on Monday night, she had a big Women of the Word gathering, about 1,100 women every Monday night. That woman worked her tail off. I was on the road, and she didn't get paid for it. But the board told her, Robin, if you'll leave the women's ministries, we'll put your four boys through Life Christian School, and that will be your pay. You won't get dollars, but you'll get Kids can go through school free of charge because of your efforts. And she took that to the bank. And those boys today were in so deep that God kept his promise to us. And now they're all on board with God's mission of I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I love you so much tonight, church. I'm on your side. I want to see it win. And our wonderful ghetto church in Miami, Trinity, is going to give, and I've already got it filled out, $2,500 to get this year's event started because we believe in what you're doing at City Church. Come on, let's stand together. Come on, let's give Rich a great big hand tonight. I didn't know Rich was going to talk about the Christian education component of it, but I want to, you can go, you can be seated.
But City Church Academy is a big component of the ministry that we do here. We talked about the three lanes of generosity. We talked about the project lane. This year, our project, before we start to build, we need to reduce debt. And so we're going to challenge you tonight to give towards that lane. We talked about the missions, all the outreaches, all the missionaries that we support, our monthly commitments, but the outreaches that we do in our community. You know, the next generation. I was thinking about, as Bruce was talking about the school, the City Church Academy uh, today and our K-5 through 5th grade program, about 90% of our children actually attend school because of a program called Step Up. Is that right, Miss Jen, about 90%? And basically, the kids don't pay. They don't personally pay because there's a state-funded scholarship called Step Up. It's not actually money through the state because that would be illegal, but uh, there's a scholarship program. It's a tax-exempt tax program for large businesses, and they give their monies. And then Step Up is a program that enables kids who qualify and basically anybody that uh, I believe the program is uh, if that you can receive food stamps. I think that's kind of basically the, the, the pro, how the program works. And so today, 90% of the kids in the City Church Academy attend, attend a Christian school because there's a scholarship program. And I begin to think about that. I begin to think about that was Jeb Bush's program. Jeb Bush, the governor, way back in the day, had a heart to see children who would never have the opportunity to go to private school, go to private school in our communities. And City Church has been placed in, in such a time as this, for such a time as this. You can come any day, you can see, now you're not allowed to walk to the school on your own, but you can see the diversity of our school. You can hear the kids in their, in their, in their classes and their learning and their arithmetic and the mathematics, and then you watch it when they come in here in chapel and they just, they're lifting their hands at Jesus and they're worshiping. These are families in the community, many of them that don't know Christ. But when their kids get in here, come on, when their kids get in this school, they get the gospel of Jesus Christ. I hear them reading their Bibles and worshiping Jesus. And that's how generations are changed. Come on. That's how generations are changed. That's how lives are changed for eternity. And this is a big deal. Rich, thank you tonight. Thank you tonight for sharing that. And he, he, he was sharing with his kids. They went to private schools. And he really believes that along with their Christian education really enable them to have the foundation and we want to build a foundation for lifelong learning spiritually and naturally our motto at city church is to raise champions and scholars for christ that's our motto now the gym and all the stuff we talked about that's multi-purpose it isn't just for the school i mean that church is going to be using it pastor glenn's got strategies and plans and we're going to open that gym up to the community we're looking to put a soccer field out here and do a bunch of stuff like that so that we can be have a greater impact here in our local community as a church the city church academy combined with city church working together to bring the mission of christ to our community is possible because of this legacy team this legacy team when i i'm going to take one of these brochures here let's see one of these that one right here. I went through the dream and I was looking at that and thinking about the things that we had talked about and all the blessings and the favor, all the challenges, just getting this building, the complexities of it. My wife and I, we've led the way. We gave the very first dollar. We gave the very first $10. We gave the very first $100. We gave the very first $1,000. We gave the very first $10,000. We sold everything we had. Just like Rich, he moved. He was in Tacoma. I was a little farther up the road in Seattle. But we moved from Seattle to Central Florida. Not a promise, not a paycheck, not a congregation, not a building, but a dream. A dream that God wanted us to touch a generation. And I have lived my whole life with this one principle. I'm not going to take anything with me. I'm telling you, I'm not taking anything with me. And all along the way, every when we bought this building, we committed the first $50,000. That's a lot of money. That's my retirement money. We committed the first $50,000 to purchase this building. When we built the building over here. We committed the first twenty-five. dollars We've led the way all along the way. Now, listen, that's a lot of money for me. That's a, that's a big commitment for us. We've lived frugal. We're not high-rolling paid pastors. We've lived very frugal. We've been very just. I told you. Many, many times. And my Jewish grandmother taught me how to turn a nickel over many, many times. But we've been frugal and we've been faithful. We've been diligent in our investment over the years. And God's blessed us and we're grateful for that. And I talked to Laura uh, a couple of months ago. You guys know this housing market's going crazy. We had a, a piece of property up in Deltona. And uh, 
we had a little mortgage on our home. We had owed about $180,000 on our home. And I said, Lord, I said, if we sell that home in Deltona, I said, we'll be able to pay our mortgage off. And then you know what we can do? We, we not take bigger vacations, not go out and buy a new car. You know what we can do? We can give more money to the kingdom of God. Because, see, it's never about raising my standard of living. It's always about raising my standard of giving. Come on, amen? And so we're... We said, you know, we're going to lead the way. We want to pay the debt off of City Church. We're going to lead the way. We're going to pay our own debt off. So we sold that property. We paid off our house. And three months ago, I got a no debt. Come on, no debt. I got Dave Ramsey ring the bell. We got our house paid. We got our vehicles paid. We have no debt. And I said, Lord, you know what we got to do? We got to lead the way. We're going to move the mountain this year. We're going to pay off debt. So we're going to lead the way in generosity. Now, we don't just have you know, paying off debt. We do missions and we do our next generation. So, so what, we talked about it. We said, why don't we do this? Why don't we take, uh, what we take, what God's put in our heart, why don't we give 75% this year to move the mountain, 25% to our missions, then we're going to give offerings above that when we have our next generation projects. So, so Lord, what do you think we should give? And it was, it's funny, when God's speaking to us both at the same time, we had a little bit of monies left over after we sold the house, we sold the house for like, after all the proceeds and everything, we had about $50,000. I said, Lord, I said, why don't we take $25,000 and why don't we put that $25,000, sow it into the kingdom of God and lead the way, lead the way for the City Church family to know that we're serious about seeing God's love come to this community, about seeing kids become champions and scholars for Christ. Some of you tonight are prepared to do this. Some of you need to go home and talk to your wives and talk to your spouses and you need to pray about what God would have you to do but I believe every single person here you're not going to take anything with you I've uh, we showed the video last Sunday where's Miss Gina Miss Gina for boys and girls mission for the BGMC program she had Luciana and Sebastian they were out selling cookies a seven-year-old and a four-year-old come on selling cookies in their neighborhood little cook cookies that they had made and cars stopping holding a great big sign up I believe all of us can do something to move the mountain and make the mission possible of bringing God's love to this community, city, and world in a powerful way. Rich, I want you to pray today. I love you. And I had a great time with you today and hearing your stories and how our lives intersected in so many familiar people and friends. And You've been a great inspiration to me. I, I mean this with all my heart. City Church, that answer that call, and in that district council, up in the northwest, some, I don't remember what city it was in, when you preached and you challenged pastors to build churches, to plant churches, that changed my life. And City Church, we ought to be grateful today. If you got saved here, if you've been healed here, if your marriage has been restored here, if you've been educated, if you've been in a small group here, this guy gets some of the credit in heaven, man. Come on, you're going to get some of the credit in heaven. There's a little bit of seed that he sowed. And Rich, I love you. I want you to pray blessing tonight. I know some of you are worried we're getting a little late here. Where are you going to go? <laughs> it's Friday night. You got to go home and sit? Sit here. But, you know, I had this thing happen to me about a year ago. You know, my wife, I was telling Steve, we, we've lived in the same home in Miami for 23 years, and it was falling apart. We live in, uh, it's just, it's this whole thing is a miracle how we got the house, but it's kind of an upscale neighborhood. And they said, you know, you need to either fix your house or sell it and move because, you know, so um, it, it wasn't an easy deal, but we decided to redo the house. So we redid the house. And it was a, about a month after that. And I was coming into the kitchen had a cup of coffee Saturday morning and my special needs son Graham was in the backyard in the pool with a, a group of guys from Vu College, Richie's college kids. And he'd call them, tell them to come over, they come over, they're having a big time. And I'm looking over the pool and there's the intercoastal, I'm drinking my coffee and I, here, I had this thought. You've done pretty good. And it, the minute I said that, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you're just passing through. You fix this house up for somebody else to live in. Hey, guess what? You're just passing through Trinity Church, too. 
you got that thing rocking so somebody else can lead it soon. And I promise under God, it's not a, an AG saying. I, I fell on my knees. I started to weep, but I repented. I said, God, anything I've ever had, you've given to me. It's all yours. The truth is tonight, we're just passing through. Let's leave as much for the next generation as we possibly can to ensure that they catch what we've had. This Holy Ghost anointed message of Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus is coming soon. He is the Savior. Lord, tonight men and women have given up a Friday night to come back to the house of God. We've refitted it to eat and act like it's a restaurant, but this is the house of God. That, Lord, with their faith, they are building in this part of Orlando. And now, Lord, they have met again, this legacy team that always goes first. And, Lord, they even know when they're coming what it's about, and they still come. I pray, God, you'd bless them for that. Then I pray that you would take these pledges and turn them into realities. And I also pray, Lord, that what is given would come back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, that, God, there would be a tenfold, a thirty, sixty, hundredfold return as they trust you, that, God, there be more than enough that comes back so we can keep doing this to see the kingdom expand. Thank you for Pastor and Laura tonight. Keep your hand on them. Keep them protected. Bless them, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.